Yeah, that, mate. Get on my T-shirt. Beautiful. Where did you get that? Kyrgyzstan. I thought I'd wear it. <laughs> in, in, uh, in, in anticipation of making it to Kyrgyzstan this year. I'm excited. Uh, racing this year. Yeah, racing. Racing. Looking forward to it. It's going to be good. I hope so. I hope so. No, no avalanche. No, well, the race does actually go through with that avalanche that uh, made the uh, news. I was, uh, funny story, it was, I looked on the, the post of the guy who um, made that video. Uh, I was there the day before. That post. <laughs> about, like, two hours earlier. No, about the same time of day, but 24 hours before. So, Vicious. I could have made that video, almost. Could have, yeah. could have made the avalanche. What were you doing? Yeah, maybe it was us passing through. <laughs> Good, good. All right. Uh, people are starting to join, so maybe we can kick this off. Firstly, thank you for uh, sort of joining me to talk about this. I know it's uh, it's probably uh, nearly your bedtime, maybe, but definitely past mine. Get enough. <laughs> um, for those of you that don't know, don't know who Nelson is, it would be good just to kick off with like a really brief oversight of who you are, because I think most people probably do, um, but that might give a nice idea of, of kind of maybe why I'm speaking to you. Yeah, uh, so I'm the organizer of the Silk Road Mountain Race and the Atlas Mountain Race. And also, uh, well, bike pack racer. I did actually race this year, but um, <laughs> used to race quite a lot. And now um, life's getting a little bit in the way of that. But, um, yeah. That's it does. Yeah. It does matter. Life gets in the way. How, how, many, how many dogs have you got, Diamond, to look after? Um, yes. Also, another announcement that, yes, we uh, have many dogs up for adoption. <laughs> we have... 14 dogs you can uh you can find the link below afterwards or something like that. yeah yeah please dm me if you need a lovely dog we'll do we'll put everything in place to uh get the dog out to you try for ideas for a mountain race maybe take a dog exactly yeah you do cool. that'll be the prize yeah yeah it's it's a good point though like you, you do organize two two races uh, as it says in the title but then you you come from a background of of racing yourself um like we met the TCR. I, I don't know if you sort of did other events around that time. There wasn't so much around those days going on unless you were going to do the Tour Divide or the Colorado Trail or these things in, in Europe anyway. It was more more in, informal events perhaps. But um, were there any others you did just, just out of interest? Um, at the time, so I did Transcontinental three times. I think yeah. we overlapped for well, all three of those. I think so. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, I remember you overtaking me in Croatia. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, uh, after that, I've done the Highland Trail a couple of times. And then this year, Italy Divide. So sort of, I think that spans the kind of diversity of uh, sort of <laughs> levels of organization and races that are out there. Yeah, yeah so, I think <laughs> from the Highland Trail to, yeah. <laughs> yeah Highland Trail's, Highland Trail's uh, perhaps an event we can come back to speak about when we get into the conversation because Alan, Alan Goldsmith is sort of... Uh, a gold standard, could we say, for, for some of these things perhaps we'll, we'll talk about. But um, this conversation is about kind of integrity and spirit. I, I, I threw spirit in there because I thought it kind of combines in with integrity that, that, that someone has and how they kind of go along with that. Um, I didn't put rules in there, but rules are perhaps something that give you a framework in which you can, can operate or, or like the rules to the game effectively. You know, you can have all the integrity in the world, but if you don't have you know, uh, 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 rules to the game. You don't know what you're playing and there's no defined, you know, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. So they are sort of something that tags along, but they're not necessarily what we are going to be talking about. Um, but if you have integrity, then you then you follow the rules. And that's, that's something to be said. Yeah. I thought before we got stuck in too far, it, it could be kind of good for perhaps you and, and me to give a bit of a definition on, on like perhaps what we think and how we see integrity and, and spirit personally in, in this sort of context. And this might help some newer people into the sport to understand how the nuance of that might might sit with what we are doing, because it might not necessarily be the same as, you know, the dictionary definition. So. Yeah. Go, go, go for it. Inte integrity. How, how do you uh, it? Integrity. It's a long answer. Long answer. It's, a, it's a difficult one, and maybe we can expand on it. But, like, just, just in the short kind of, you know, how do you see integrity? So I think so... If you look at the sort of the basic definition of it, if you were to Google integrity, I mean, you know, it's, the, it's on, having the honesty, um, qualities of honesty and moral, uh, moral principles. So I think in the context of bikepacking, the really key thing is that a lot of the rules and following the rules and riding 
the way you should be riding, it is internal. You know, there are no, there are not many actual checks. You know, I mean, I, as a race director, it's unlikely that I'm ever going to catch you blatantly cheating in front of me, you know? So I think the integrity is so important in this kind of racing because, because it, it has to come from you. And so it is internalizing those, those rules and then following them yourself with, despite the fact that there are, there may well not be many consequences visibly, you know, people won't probably know about it if you took that shortcut. So it's, you know, to the center of the sport. Yeah, I, 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 I think that, that that's it. It's very much doing, doing the right thing, even though no one's watching or no one's going to find out, but just doing it anyway. And, and that's that honesty um, coming, coming through there, isn't it, really? It's a, I, I read something, I was doing a little bit of research, and I read something that the Transcontinental had on their website that was something that Mike said quite a long time ago, where you kind of enter into, a, into an unwritten and an, an unspoken contract almost with, with other races that you're going to do the right thing, they're going to do the right thing. No one's ever going to know really what happened, but it's just that's that. And, uh, and it's just that, that honesty. I think that's a good word you used there, really. Mm. And, you know, so I think it was Mike that said this as well, is that, you know, the first thing you should do is you should think and any decision you take during the race if you're not sure about something, because the rules, generally, they're quite short. You know, we have around 10 rules more or less for, for a lot of these races and we don't cover, we don't have a rule book that covers every single potential situation, but he would always say, think of the rider ahead of you, think of the rider behind you and how would that impact their race and how would you feel about it if you were in their shoes? Yeah. And I think that if you can do that with honesty, then, then you're going to be taking the right decisions. And if you're yeah. unsure, you can always get in touch with the organization of the race. There's always other people to talk to and that, that should be the approach rather than just, you know, sort of do it and hope for the best. Yeah, I, I think I think so. It, that sort of brings us into that the rules and perhaps that in, in TCR the tenth rule, um, I, and I just had them up here. Uh, it's, it's a good place to kind of refer to was ride in the spirit of self reliance and equal opportunity, and that sort of captures that integrity part. But then it puts and, and gives you an idea of what you should be doing. Really, you should be thinking: Is this fair and is it equal? Yes, no, then, then no. And that there is that nuance in perhaps you know, education of, of newer riders to understand perhaps what is fair and what isn't fair. And, and as more people come in and they don't have that experience from years of, of doing this, they need to perhaps be able to find that information online to say, oh, you know, is it, is it fair to get, you know, some food from this person on, on the side or can I get some water from them or, you know, can I draft a little bit? Obviously to us, we know the answers, but they might not be obvious to others. But it puts in this word of sort of spirit. Um, and obviously we don't know kind of what spirit is in the dictionary. Um, is it that sort of intangible thing that you have inside of you. But I was wondering if you sort of had a way that you define that. So for me, the spirit, I think it's, it's maybe a little bit more complicated than integrity because you know, integrity is, is quite clear. You don't really stray that far off from, from the dictionary definition, right? I mean, you understand if someone has moral principles or not. But I think the spirit is, is kind of the culture behind these races. It's the, you know, the, the, the way that people approach them. And of course, if this is your first race and it's, you don't, you know, you've, you've never taken part in this. It's, it's obviously you don't necessarily know, you know, the, the way people are riding things, what's normal, what's, what's normal behavior, how, whether, you know, those rules written in black and white on a website before you sign up are actually enforced. Is it something that really people really do follow? And depending on the race, they, you know, it does, it does vary. There is, there is more or less culture of this kind of stuff. And I think that you do, there is a learning experience when you take part in these races, but also we could also do better in terms of writing more content or explaining more. I think the, the old Tour de Vibe website has never been updated in a long time, I think partially deliberately, but that there's, there are examples of the kind of things that are okay. You know, the, what, what is trail magic? You know, what is something that was just happened across the road and, you know, somebody gave you a small amount of assistance. When is that assistance too much? Is it, you know, just fortuitous luck that's, you found something or yeah. is it someone helping you? Yeah. I think that, that's a really interesting topic is that, that, that sort of difference in rules between events, race, well, races, some consider themselves events, but they are races, um, how the organizers uh, sort of interpret and uh, act on, on those rules that they have. And it, it could be confusing for someone that is, is newer into it. They go to one event and maybe it's a little bit lax on some rules or maybe they see this or that happening and there's not an enforcement on that. Or perhaps you're even allowed to do something like trail magic, which you're not necessarily allowed to do at some events in, 
and, and races in Europe because it's seen and understood in a different way. And, and then you go from one race to, to another race and hang on, I'm playing by a different set of rules and they're not really well defined. And th th there is, there is a, definitely a difference in rules between events and then there is definitely a, a, a variation in, in application and, and enactment on those rules at, at events. Is, is that something you feel, you feel as well? Yeah, for sure. So I feel like you've had maybe these, you know, the transcontinental, I think, was in terms of sort of majorly organized, well-run events, you know, this this was kind of the, the benchmark. And then a lot of events, I mean, same with mine, you know, uh, Mike was was involved with the race early on, and it is, it is inspired by the transcontinental for sure. And then it depends. And then you, when you look at other races, everyone has, well, a lot of events have just transposed those rules and transposed that. And then the reality on the ground is quite different. And yeah. so there is that, there is a big sort of um, disconnect between those two things. But, and then you can understand riders, you come into a race and if you're very competitive and you put a huge amount of, of preparation into it, when you see other riders doing things and you see that it's not a level playing field, then I can understand the temptation to also bend the rules because you feel that you can't be competitive without, you know, without not doing it the right way. Yeah. I think that's, it's, it's an interesting point, actually, because that sort of puts us in this scenario, which, which brings me on to kind of one of my questions that I have was like, maybe we could give some examples of what good looks like and what bad looks like for, for integrity in these things to kind of help people un understand a little bit. And, and, you know, perhaps you are in a scenario where you find yourself and you see someone else doing something maybe they, they shouldn't be doing, or, you know, you have that, that moment where you can be doing something. Um, and then, and then it, it really comes back to integrity. This, like, if you see someone doing something they probably shouldn't be doing, you know, what do you do? I, I, I know in, in your event and um, in TCR as well, there is sort of a an ethos of take a photo of them doing it, send it to me, I'll deal with them, you know? And it's, it's, it's like you're going to have to report that person. Perhaps you could speak to them as well at that point in time. Um, and, and to give an example, something someone said to me, a comment once I spoke about this was like, at some events now at the start of events, you see a lot of people drafting. And there's this sort of like, you know, de facto, people are trying to almost create this de facto unwritten rule that it's okay to draft at the beginning of a, of a race because, mm -hmm. you know, it's difficult to not drop. Okay. It is difficult to not drop, but it's not impossible. And I found myself in a scenario where there's almost been a mini peloton. And, and you know, you kind of then got a choice. Well, do you partake in that or do you actively, you know, n not partake in it and then say, hang on, this is not acceptable, people. You, 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 there is a rule. You, can, you cannot be doing this. Um, and, and, and clearly people are struggling with, with that choice because it's easy to get caught up in the moment. What you, For what sure. You... I mean, I've, I've, I've heard of, of other riders who are telling me, you know, if, if I come to your race and I, I take part in your events, I know that the rules are more strictly enforced and that we'll take them seriously, so I will act in a different way. But because I'm taking part in this other race where there's this different, different culture and then that these things are just sort of accepted, that then you'll act in that different way. So I think that goes back to integrity as well, where you kind of have to think, I mean, it's changing and it is becoming more competitive and the stakes are a bit higher. There are people who are making a living from this kind of racing. But fundamentally, you know, you have to go back to the fact that you, you're cheating yourself. You know, this, this is, is also a huge thing about personal accomplishment and managing to, to do these things properly the right way yourself and that you're taking those shortcuts, you know, you're only doing, you know, the person who's, who's the most at harm, you know, is, is yourself. You know, you're cheating yourself the most. But it takes a lot of education, I think, and, you know, a while for people to really understand that as well. Yeah, I think so. It's a yeah. good point that you are, if you are gaining advantage, you know, cheating is to, to, to gain advantage. And if you're doing something to gain advantage, perhaps taking some food from someone that, that could be considered support. Um, and, and that's kind of kind of a some people like to use it as a gray area then you are just gaining an advantage and really you're you're you're, you're cheating yourself but you know people think oh it's a gray area it's okay you know maybe in their head they they convince themselves that it's not cheating because oh it's okay you know uh, and I, I i sort of have these these memories of perhaps on tcr where it's more common it doesn't really happen in Pakistan so much it's not someone on the side of the road but Someone it's on the side of the road with a, in TC, in a yeah, with, a, with, a, with a shopping bag, hold, holding up a shopping bag of, of food for me. Um, and, and, you know, at this point, we get into this discussion of is that trail magic or not? For me, 
I don't think trail magic's okay. And personally, I, I've always operated on this on this internal rule of my 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 rides uh, need to be beyond repute. Basically, so there is literally nothing that anyone could ever come back to me about and be like, "Oh, that that's kind of a grey area." And I think that's a really good internal rule, to have, especially if you really want to be at the front, but anywhere, because then you just know no one can come and say anything. But if you have someone standing there at the side of the road holding up a shopping bag of food, it might be easy to think, oh, you know, they're, 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 they're just being kind. I'm just going to take that because they're being kind. But at the same time, if you consider it from the opposite angle, they're probably not going to be there for every single person. So everyone doesn't have that equal opportunity to, to get that food. Uh, and in a way, you are having an, an advantage by that and you're not being self-reliant. So you're kind of acting contrary to a few of the generally accepted, you know, you know, rules or in ethics, integrity of, of bikepacking, which is, you know, self-reliance, equal opportunity. But in that moment, perhaps it can be a bit easy to, to convince yourself that it's okay or not, not really go through that. But I think that's perhaps an example of something that I don't think is acceptable. It is still a gray area, but perhaps needs a lot more, you know, well, no, so I think firm, firm hand on it from some, some events. No, for sure. So, so in that case, I would, I would say that that's not a gray area in that, that even in, you know, events that would, uh, would accept trail magic because that is somebody who knows about the ride. That is somebody who knows this is James Hayden. He's up at the front of TCR and I'm a fan. I support what he does. I want to hand him over. I want to give him something because I, because I appreciate him, you know, and that is, that is planned. He knows who you are. He knows what the race is, was, is going on. And, and they're, they're giving you that. And, it, you know, I've had that in TCR as well. You know, people who meet you and they say, oh, you know, you want to have this. And no, you know, I'm, I'm good. Thanks. Thanks for the offer. You know, because there's also the little kind of like this person has made the effort to come out and see you. But you say, no, no, I, I'm fine. I'll, I'll do yeah. it. Cheers for, the, cheers for the effort. But uh, no, you know. And, that, and that's, that right there is integrity. That's what integrity is. And that's operating within the spirit of, of, of the of the community, you know, of, of ultra endurance racing, bikepacking racing, you know, whichever you want to call it really, isn't it? It's being able to make that correct decision when no one else is watching and no one would ever know really, unless that dot watcher or, or person that came out told someone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be the irony that you got caught out by the person who said they were there to help you. Uh, yeah. But no, but it, you could you could start planting people like that along the routes as a way of uh, testing the integrity of riders. <laughs> there, there are lots of things you, you, you could do, can't you? But again, maybe it comes back to like this, this confusion that sometimes there can be because, you know, some events would just completely overlook that and be like, that's not even a problem. I don't even care about that, whatever. Some events, and, and even we could consider a bit the tour divide. I, I'm not super like you know, clear on all of their rules because I don't think they're very well defined in honesty at this point. And I think that's something for, for the event to actually really revisit and really be like, these are the rules, you know, this is the gameplay we're operating within, so it's clear. But I, I think there that actually if someone did that, it is, it is actually kind of accepted because I've seen examples of people doing that and being open about doing that on social media and not being shut down in any way, you know, not shut down in there like, you know, you need to be quiet, but in like, no, that's being, okay. yeah, being called why are you doing that? And so I, I don't really understand if there is that difference there, but so, so there is sort of that, that confusion for people. Um, yeah, for me, I, I didn't understand the trail magic. magic. Sorry, go. No, I was going to say like, I think it, it is like you said earlier on, people contact you and say, I want to come to your event or maybe to TCR as well, because they are considered, at the higher end of, of the spectrum of having that integrity and not not just the integrity of the race but the integrity of the race direct Right. Oh, you're back. Okay, yeah. uh, you lost me. I lost you. All right, <laughs> we lost each other. Perfect. We found each other. No, I was saying that, that, that with SR, uh, you know, your events, SR, AMR, AMR, and then TCR, they are kind of considered the higher echelon, not just because of the races that go there act with integrity, but the as a race director, uh, the event, you, they act with higher integrity. 
lagging a little bit. Uh, Kirk's internet's not doing so well. Um, yeah, so no, I think there's 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 a combination. You you kind of see it with the the level of organisation of the event. You can also have an idea of of how those rules are going to be enforced as well. Um, yeah, you know the reason the reason people come to my races also is because they know that there will be a level playing field, or as much as as possible, I will do what I can to to put that level playing field in place, and that if you are going to take the time to train to prepare. It's a huge commitment, these kinds of races. And if you are going out there to try and do well in a race, especially, or actually at any level, you know, um, you're digging pretty deep and you're, you're putting yourself through a hell of an experience. So I feel that it's only fair to the riders to know that when they come and they do their best, that it will be whatever result they get is based on their, their real performance and not based on the fact that their performance compared to someone else who then took a shortcut or was able to do something that gave them an advantage, which meant that they ended up ahead of them. You know, that you, know, yeah. you put the work in and you get the result you deserve. And I think that's, that's very important. And I think that's, that's part of the attraction of my races as well. You know, I, I've, I've been I, to another few events and uh, I would not go back as a racer. The last race I took part in, I wasn't particularly well prepared. You know, I hadn't done much riding. So maybe it did bother me less that I was the only person riding by myself next to a peloton being overtaken by 30 riders riding together. You know, like but it would probably irritate me a lot more if I was out the front because I was doing it for myself, 100%. You know, the, the result was not that important in that case. But that shouldn't be the case. No. It shouldn't no, matter. I, I, I agree with you 100%. I, I sort of, I come to your event and I come to a few other events, Highland Trail with, with Alan Goldsmith, because I see them as, as the gold standard of, of integrity and I know that if I'm going to do my, my fair effort then then it's very likely that other people will and if they don't there will be a penalization on that and, and that's fair uh, and you know if someone is reported at one of these events for doing x y and z and there is some evidence or the corroboration from another from another racer then the, the organizer will will act on that and not just you know shy shy away from it um, and I, I almost have this issue at the moment that there is a uh, how would you say a, a lack of these like events with directors with integrity that that you know if you're going to go to there is going to be a fair rules and a sort of oh, lost you again for a second there or oh, you lost me Not sure. Not sure. <laughs> Uh, you're back. <laughs> we lost each other again. Okay. Yeah, yeah you were saying, sorry. Uh, I was saying that there is a lack of events with race directors such as yourself or those at TCR. Um, and, and for me as a racer, there aren't that many events I feel I'd go to and give 100% you know, to, to race because I don't feel it's, it's, it's worth it. Yeah. No, for sure. And I mean, I think it's something we should change. Or there's something... It's, it's hard to know these things before you go to those events. I think maybe there is something to be done in actually sharing that information in a more public way. I mean, I, you know, it sounds a bit self-interested in my case just to say that my events are run like this, but like before you start, a lot of it is, and you, um, you, you talk to people who have done it before and you say, how is this one? You know, uh, what are the rules like? You know, what is the organization like? What is actually provided? You know, why, why am I paying an entry fee? If I, if I race as hard as I can, am I going to get the result that I deserve? Or am I going to get overtaken by a massive peloton? You know, like it's, uh, yeah, I think the, the main I mean, issue is that the sport is gone. Yeah. Yeah. I think no, that the I, big, I, big I, problem is that the, the, the sport has exploded recently and you have a lot of events that are basing themselves and you announce that, then it's not a problem. But it has yeah. to be clear. Yeah, I think it's interesting that that is a problem. I, I'm not at the moment in my head 100% on, on how we deal with this problem. One, one of the ideas that I did have was perhaps to, to leave from the front, so, so to say, 
and I wanted to put on my own event because as a, as a racer, I have one voice uh, and I can use that to do certain things. But if I become a race director and put on my own event, um, then I can use my voice. Like I, I have a new voice in, in, in that area. And perhaps I can then get together with other, other event and, and race directors to discuss things. Also build my own sort of rules, taking influence from, from different areas, but put something together in a way that I feel perhaps works and then try and develop that. Um, but, but that's very much a sort of setting an example and, and be like, this, this is how I think should, things should be done. This is my sort of standard. And, and then put that out there in the community for others to see. And then, and then maybe people, like, I think probably a lot of people come to your event or, or they go to TCR or Highland Trail. And I keep coming back to these events because I can consider them the gold standard. And uh, they go, oh, this is what it should be like. I can take this away and, and perhaps you know, do it against other events. But I think a lot of people are also perhaps not so perhaps bothered by the way other events are run, uh, as perhaps I am, you are, I, I don't know. But I, I did get quite a good response to the poll I did the other day about, you know, do you like rules? Are rules important for, for this community? And overwhelmingly, the answer was yes, which gave me a lot of joy. Actually, I was really quite pleased to see that. Um, but what, what, what ideas do you have from sort of a, a race direct perspective for other, other events and races out there on how they can you know, really help to, to push things forward, to, 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 to not just set, set a standard, but innovate and be better for, for, for everyone. Yes, I definitely think it's, it's something that we need to improve on. I mean, I've, to be honest, and I've, I've replicated a lot of what TCR did of what Mike was saying. I don't know if I had, if I felt that I had the standing at the time. You know, Mike developed or built on the rules that he had, and it was a work in progress. But then also Mike was one of the, you know, one of the best ultra racers that there was out. And, um, I think now I'm starting to get the, the kind of the position where I have the experience and the standing in the community to actually do a little bit of this, but it's for sure. I think it's, it's the rules should evolve and they should, they should carry on. Um, I think it's interesting, you know, you were saying that the community likes the rules. You know, we, I saw, I think you, uh, you posted about an event that was saying nobody likes rules. Um, I, I feel like, you know, 10 rules in a race and it is a race. You know, if it's not a race, that's another story. There's no problem with that each to their own, you can do something else. There's, there's great rides out there, that's just perfect. But if it is a race, you do need rules. And I don't think that a handful of quite simple to follow rules is, is the biggest problem. But yeah, it's, it's a complicated one because you know, enforcing the rules, it takes community. And so I think it is building a community. And the problem is that we've got a community that's building very fast. We have some big personalities. Um, we have a lot of fans of these kinds of races that don't take part. You know, I think if you were to take a poll of the community of people that actually race, you would end up with a lot of support for, for, for what we're talking about. But then if you were to talk about people who are more fans of some of the people smashing records, then there'll be another discussion where, you know, the smashing of the records is the most important thing rather than, than the community behind it and the, and the, the sort of equal playing field. But yeah. 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 It, I, it, it is interesting though, because, it's definitely at this moment, like, if you're, a, if you're a racer that races, I don't even need to think you need to race right at the front of an event, but if you're, if you're you know, been doing it for a while, perhaps, like, a Adrian O'Sullivan is a good example of this. Adrian, who, who runs Transatlantic Way, which is now considered, an, an, he calls it an event rather than a race, and he's quite categorically uh, clear on that. But you can still go there and ride it fast if you want. But Adrian, uh, uh, you know, he, he's quick, but he's, you know, he's, an, he's, he's older, He's fast for his age, but he's not a flat-out fast race at the front competing to win. And, I, and I'm going to pick him for, for, for an example because, um, or even even Alan Goldsmith, actually, you know, quick, complete, competes and, and completes the Highland Trail, which just completing it is, is validation enough. But the, the point is that you don't necessarily need to be at the front of a race for an event to understand inside of you what integrity and spirit are you can be wherever you are within the field to be someone to then go and take that forward and make your own event and, and then enact on that within the event to, to set this sort of integrity from, a, from an event or, or race direct perspective rather than a, a racer. So that translates across irrespective of, of your position in, in the field. Yeah, for sure. But the, the kind of question is like, if that's the case, and there are lots of these new events that are cropping up where, you know, 
how can they demonstrate that they have integrity? You know, because I, 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 I if I see a fun event and, and I think, well, that looks kind of interesting, a new event, I'm like, how am I going to want to go and race that? And I, and I thought about this a lot when I was putting on my own event and, and how I could demonstrate it. And I, and I had some ideas, but do you have any ideas for, for sort of new event and race directors out there that how they could demonstrate integrity in the earlier years of, of an event to perhaps or race to entice people and to set the standard for others? Yeah, so I think, I think it's, it's the way you behave, you know. So I was, for, as, a, as a very concrete example in my case, in the Silk Road Mountain Race the first year, I'd never organized a race. I'd done quite well in a few transcontinentals. I had some race pedigree, but I'd never, ever organized a race. And so, you know, the question could be posed, what, what decisions do you make, you know, when you see rule breaking? There are, you know, there are pros and cons. You know, you could you could decide that for the good of the race or for the for the you know the outside spectator or visibility, it'd be better to kind of keep things quiet and not say anything, or not. You know, and I, um, the first year, I had a very clear test where I had two riders who were in a very good position. They were third and they finished third and fourth, and I'd actually warned them during the race. They, you know, they ended up riding about ninety percent of the race together. And so this is kind of this also goes back to the kind of questions of what's okay and what's not okay. Because in a race where there's only one category and it's solo, it's like the Tour Divide, maybe riding for considerable amounts of time is a gray area. It's considered a gray area. And so these guys, you know, depending on where they fell in that gray area, they felt that it was okay. Whereas in my race, there's a solo and there's a pair category. And so after having warned them that, no, you, you can't be riding together, you need to split up. Then I, I took the decision to declassify them. They got the finish. They did ride the, they, they rode the ride but they didn't get the position of third and fourth in the race because they teamed up as a, as a pair, basically. And so I think those kind of decisions, you know, I was, in a way, it was a big test for me because it took quite a bit of confidence to say, look, this is, this is right and this is what we should do. And it did cause a bit of controversy at the time to kick out two riders from the general classification. But at the same time, it also set a standard. And they said, look, this is not okay. This is outside of... I don't technically have a rule that says you can't ride the entire race with another person, but... It's not the spirit of self-reliance. Yeah. Clearly, they weren't doing it right. And I yeah. think anyone who's watching that race understood that. And if you make that precedent, then now I do have the advantage that nobody teams up in my races. <laughs> Which you shouldn't. It doesn't happen. Knows. Which you shouldn't. It's obvious, but it doesn't happen. Nobody well, tries to test that. And people are quite worried about it. Saying, you have rules and you act on them. You know, and you're, and you're just you clear. Act on them and you, make, you know, you're clear about that. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know if it's like perhaps um, an opportunity of, or not opportunity, but a, a causation of my position. But I will often hear from people who've been to events. They'll send me a message afterwards saying, oh, I you know, saw this, I heard about this, or this happened. I mean, I, I would assume that you have similar things. And there's a lot of like background uh, that goes along. That, um, Sorry, dogs. <laughs> dogs there, baby. Um, there's, there's a lot of background chatter that goes on and I kind of hear these things and I'd assume you do as well. And so perhaps we get maybe a, a different picture of, of how things are because it is that it comes back to the integrity, things that people aren't going to see, but they other people don't see them. We, we sort of end up hearing about them. So we see that, that other people don't. Is that something you experience well, as well? Yeah. So I feel like it's a lot of word of mouth. You know, you ask about race, you ask how it's going. You know, there's the, there's the social media picture. There's what everyone's posting, which is a very glossy, you know, well, I mean, I'm, as glossy as bikepacking racing can be in certain circumstances. But you definitely, you're not, you know, people are not talking about rule breaches. They're not, I think there's, there's a, there is a lack of, you know, finger pointing, which I can understand. It's human nature. You don't want to be publicly shaming and naming but I think you should be able to turn to a race director if there is something you think is unfair that you should be able to talk about it. You know, so I, you know, we've kind of avoided names of other events and things, but I think, you know, I, I was, in, was in Italy divide that I was racing and there were just so many examples. And I also knew that the independent organizer wouldn't do anything about it anyway. There was, there's, there, you know, there's the excuse that it's not a race, it's an event. But then everything yeah. about it screams race, apart from the fact that the rules are not enforced. You know, it's, it's marketed as a race. It's, it's clearly a race. People are doing it in three and a half days. People are racing it. Okay, for legal reasons, it can't be a race. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't have the, you know, it could be a ride with a lot of ethics, you know. It could be a fair ride. Yeah. yeah. And I knew that if I were to go to a race director and say, look, I've seen this, I've seen that, 
you know, nothing would happen. So there's no point. You just tell your mates when somebody says, oh, you know, would you consider doing that? Should I train for it and ride flat out? You say, well, do it for yourself. But if you want to win it, then you're going to struggle if you're not bending the rules because uh, many people yeah. are bending the rules there. Yeah, that, that, that kind of comes into that. It, it, it's sort of a gray area. Perhaps like you say, it's, it's this unspoken thing about the public because it's a bit glossy. Is like, you know, the, the, there's there's perhaps an unwillingness to, to air dirty laundry in public about some things because, you know, I can understand that from perspective because everyone wants to build a sport in the community, but if people aren't willing to talk about the hard things and perhaps, you know, some more of the like publications who, who aren't willing to put questions, you know, you know, there's not really a journalistic aspect to, to any publication. You go, hang on, these are the rules of the community to what going on, going on, but I've heard these stories. Can you, can you talk to me about that to, to, to either an event or a race? So we don't have that public accountability. Yeah, for sure. I feel like a lot of the, the press or, you know, the, the journalism, I don't know how, how objective it is, how critical it is, how, how much it does go into depth. You know, it's more, I think we're still at the stage of saying, oh, you know, this amazing achievement and these, which, which does, you know, a lot of it is quite superhuman, you know, sleeping X hours a day and, you know, covering these, these giant distances and people are focusing on that. But I think it's a wider problem in the bike industry as well is that maybe you do need some kind of independent verification of things because there's a big connection between the bike brands, the media, and that, you know, cheating doesn't sell bikes, you know, lack of integrity doesn't sell bikes. You know, if you're saying that, you know, it's, it's these amazing results that sell bikes. And so there's a bit of a tendency, certainly on the media side, to, to gloss over that stuff. Yeah. I, I, then, I, I know, think that who needs to step in? Yeah. I think there is that un unwillingness publicly to just put questions that are difficult to, to events or, or, or people uh, and say, hey, this is integrity. This is what I've heard. You know, what, what's going on here? Can we, can we get an explanation? You know, maybe you want to go away and have a think about that and come back and, you know, change some things. And perhaps until we have those difficult conversations in a more public way where there is accountability, there might be a lack of progress or, or development in, in some areas. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think we're going to, we're going to continue to see a lot more of the same. I, I like, I like the independence of the events and the fact that it's all, everything's kind of springing up from, from whichever experience of, of riders. But at the same time, I don't know how you kind of unify some, to some degree, the sport. I mean, I don't, I'm certainly not the kind of person who said we should have a, uh, like a proper, not a union, what would you call it? Association. <laughs> yeah, association would be under the UCI, no. But, um... No, I think, it, I think it's great that there is this, that, 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 that everything is separated. It makes everything a lot faster to develop, and it, it's kind of interesting. And I think an association might, might stifle that, you know. But there are, there are some pretty standard and accepted rules, and there are discussions like this, and there are some other events that are trying to do things better. And, and maybe it's more of like an education to new people coming into the sport with more, more things like this, more setting the standards in events. And they might understand what good and bad looks like between events. And, and then they, they can make their feet choice with their, own, with their own feet. You know, I don't want to go to that event because, you know, maybe those events will keep getting new. I don't, I don't know. But yeah, it's, it's an interesting question. Though. You, you spoke about one event which perhaps uh, does, doesn't display integrity. But um, to come back to the example of the, the Highland Trail, it's not called a race. Uh, actually, I don't think it says race anywhere. Um, mm. Ride it fast if you want. So we'll, we'll call it an event for this for this purpose. I, I actually really don't think it matters if something's called an event or a race. You can do what you want. And in the end of the day, you're sort of just, you're going as quick as you can go as a human being anyway. So it doesn't matter who else is riding. But yeah, yeah for sure. The Highland Trail is an event. Like I, I would consider that sort of an Alan Goldsmith, who, who is the event director, like a, 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 um, the gold standard and bastion of integrity like I've, I've been witness to two things there on, on two separate occasions. And I've taken a, a second out of, of the event while, while writing to document some evidence, email that off to him. And then after the event, he's taken that on board, done some independent research of his own, and then made a finding, a decision, and, and acted on that. And, you know, he's never sort of, spoken about that publicly in, in a way of like you know naming people or doing this or shaming people but it's more like you know he, he just took that on did the research a bit like you has a set of rules found it against the rules and was like no 
Uh, well, in the first event, he chose not to issue um, results for, for that event. There was no results issued because he said, I cannot get to the bottom of this. I'm not happy. I'm not issuing results. I'm, I'm quite sad, actually. Um, and in the, in, the, in the second event, there was some people that were, were disqualified you know, because he corroborated what was said with other people. Yep. And, and I mean, that, 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 that's what good looks like. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But I think it's like, it's like having the, the confidence and, and belief as a, as a racer that if you speak to a, a, a race or event director about a problem, it's going to get sort of taken and escalated rather than just pushed under the rug and, and ignored. Yeah, for sure. So I think, and that, that I think maybe that you can, we can do more in terms of explaining that that is what will happen. You know, the, the, the race briefings, saying that, you know, you can raise these issues, how to do it, you know, when to do it, what, you know, what you need to do, what, how you need to show it, and, and explain why it's important. You know, people, people forget it. You know, they don't, they don't they, if you're doing it for yourself, then you might not think about, you know, should I, you know, yeah, there's, there's a certain sort of embarrassment about, like, pointing to someone else. Yeah. It's not, it's a lot not, of people it's don't not, do it. It's not snitching, though. And I, I thought it was good to make the point that, like, I've done this on... I don't know. At least, at least three, four occasions, maybe more. It's, if you if you include drafting at the start of events, probably like a dozen. But then I, yeah. if there's the opportunity for me to raise something with an individual or a group in in person, I would do it there and then. And then I will also, you know, re report that. If there's not an opportunity to do it in person, I won't. I will just report it up up the channel, which would be to the the, the director. But it's not it's not snitching. It's not whatever. It's like it's it's holding people to account to that you know, unwritten contract of integrity that they've agreed to. And if you don't want to play yeah. by that, don't play. Well, yeah, you don't need to, you know, when you sign up to the race, you, you see what the rules are and you don't have to sign up, you know, nobody's forcing anyone to sign up. No. It's no. pretty clear from the beginning. No, no. But like, w w okay, so, so we kind of said what good or bad looks like, what integrity is, maybe what you can do if you, you see a lack of integrity, you can report that and, and you can hope that, that a director does something about it. And we hope that, you know, some more event and race directors might choose to raise their game personally as, as other events and races raise their game. If they don't, then people might not want to go there or they might just treat it as a fun ride or whatever, who cares? And that's fine. But w what can we do beyond kind of conversations like this and me saying, oh, I do this and I do that to perhaps pass these integrity and spirit and the, the understanding of it on to newer people coming in? Well, I think there's certainly an education aspect to it. I, I'm in the pipe work planning to share more content on this through our, through our channels. Um, I mean, beyond, beyond that, yeah, I mean, it's a difficult topic. You know, there's, yeah, it's not easy. No. No, I mean, I, I, I've always believed in, in, in rather than, you know, lead, lead by example and, and set an example rather than tell people this is, you know, this is what you should do. Just do it. People will witness it and hopefully they'll understand that that's the way that, that, that you should operate. And I think that people have that image from me, um, that, that that's the way it is. And I certainly know I got a few messages before this uh, saying, you know, it's really good to have you talking about this. You know, I remember seeing you in, in this event or that event or even in your event at this mountain race being like, stop, stop drafting. You know, what are you doing? It's not acceptable, you know. Um, I remember that peloton up, up the highway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, uh, so that, that's an example. You know, that's, like I said, that's a bad example on my side in terms of organization where, you know, we had what well, should have been a neutralized start. And then uh, we had the uh, Moroccan police outriders who uh, did, had a different understanding of what a neutralized start was for a bikepacking race and set off around 40 kilometers an hour. <laughs> no, it was a little bit different. So yeah, the, uh, if, when we finally get round to the second edition of uh, Atlas Mountain Race this October, many, many times uh, delayed because of COVID, I will definitely be talking to uh, the Moroccan police and I think I'll have a control cut in front of them, <laughs> which will keep them down to, to a speed where, you know, I won't have to be telling people that they shouldn't be drafting and having you people, you telling people they shouldn't be drafting, you know? Yeah, maybe it's a, it's, it's a hard mentality thing as well, you know, not to compare people to animals, but they are sometimes really, aren't they? Because, you know, if, if people are with other people there, then they get caught up in that group mentality of, oh, let's, let's draft. And, and no one goes, hang on, 
second, this this isn't really what we should be doing. Let's just okay, maybe we have to ride in a group because we can't really stick out because there's you know fifty of us. But we could just ride really slowly, and no one's yeah, going to get so dropped or no one's no one's you know because loads of people got dropped. And so you're right. So no one's going to get dropped. We're going to turn off this tarmac in a bit. At that point, it'll get strung out anyway, and and whatever from there, you can't really drop. So you could do 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 these things as an individual, but. When there's a bunch of individuals within a group, no one really stops to think about that, maybe. And no, it ends up being a group. Yeah. 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 I had, I had, uh, we, we were sort of kind of coming to the end of, 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 of my list of things that I thought we could talk about. And it's, I mean, we could talk for a long time. And, and I think it is good to discuss what, what people can do as individuals and, and what other events can do and, and perhaps how we can set the standard. But I did have a couple of questions, so I was just going to look at those. Yeah, go for it. Uh, so this is this is an interesting question, actually. Uh, I think the answer answer is categorical. But should there be a difference in expectations? Uh, I, I'm assuming in integrity and spirit for front versus mid and rear of pack riders. So no. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. No. Right, so I yeah, people, I mean. The a lot of people talk about it and they say, "Oh, but you know, they're right at the back, so it doesn't really matter what's going on there." But why, why is that the case? You know, you're, you're competing against the same, you're, you're trying to finish the same thing. You're all getting a, a finish. You're, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you're, you're cheating yourself again. For me, it goes back to that. You know, I, Italy divide, I was, I finished, I don't know what, 30 something ish. You know, I was, I was not exceptionally fast or well, not exceptionally slow either, but I was all right. And, you know, we did it, we did it by, you know, followed the rules basically. And it was quite funny to see. It's there was a real sort of culture clash between between people who get it and the people who were just, you know, this is this is all right because that's kind of the culture of the event. Um, you know, it's not officially a race, all this kind of stuff. Um, so I was with another another rider who's actually coming to, to Silk Road, and you know we were riding next to each other as we were overtaken by a group of a you know, little gruppetto going past, <laughs> and. Uh, to tell you a little bit like the, the kind of the internalization of, of the culture of this stuff you know we rode i think it's the first time ever but we we actually rode a bit together i think most of the day and um there was times when we both stopped and it kind of like we started riding together and you know I've, you know given the culture of the event you know it was completely absolutely never going to be questioned the fact that we were riding together we we're never drafting but we were still riding together we you know we, we stopped for lunch together that kind of stuff and after a few hours, we're like, actually, I, I feel uncomfortable about this. Should we just like make sure we split up like deliberately, you know? Um, and then we didn't see each other for the rest of the race. But like, because we knew, you know, that was the way that it should be done. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that's it. Like, again, it comes back to exactly what you said at the beginning. It is, is, is just acting, you know, in, in an honest way, even if no one's watching. And just doing it, irregardless. Yeah. There was, there was, which, yeah. No, sorry, sorry. No, no, no I was going to go on. So there's one more oh, question. I was okay, so no, I was just going to say, and what, what kind of gave me hope, a lot of hope in that event was, despite the fact that I saw a lot of rule breaches, there was a young young English rider, and I was saying it was, I think it was his second race, or his first or his second race, and I was kind of, I was kind of talking about this because because of all the all the what I was seeing at the event. I was like, you know, how about you? You know, this is your second race. How do you, do you feel about this? You know, should I be writing more blog posts? Should I be doing more explanations about, you know, the, the rules and like trying to get people to internalize them, understand why it's important and understand how, you know, for the sense of achievement and, you know, this is why it's important. And he sort of answered, well, no, like, it's very simple. <laughs> it's an unsupported bike packing race. Sure. Like, so I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. okay, good. So you, it shouldn't be that difficult to get. Like, we should be able to get there, you know? I wonder if there's a, I wonder if there's a culture aspect to it. I wouldn't want to, you know, yeah. I wonder if there's a culture aspect. That's an interesting one to think about. Maybe there was one more question. That 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 is good to hear. It's a bit like my my appreciation. People saying that they like rules. Um, the 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 final question was: Would you define uh sort of trail trail angels? Oh, okay. No, this is okay. This is um. Would you define enduring trail angels sort of like caches or, or things that are available to all as different from serendipitous trail magic? I guess we're getting like, into weird terminology here. But the question the is caches. like, yeah, say, say, say we're racing through Kyrgyzstan and I live there and I put out like water and there was 
enough for absolutely everyone and I put out enough food that there was enough for absolutely everyone. Is that all right? Like, can you take from that? Can you not take from that? Is, and that's versus like someone just holding up a shopping bag of food for maybe some people and not all of the people. I mean, I have an answer, that's, but that's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if in doubt, then just do it yourself. But um, is, yeah. is for me the answer. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so it's so a Silk Road Mountain Race. I do have, there is one difference that I have put in the rules, which would probably go beyond your definition of, uh, of what is unsupported racing. And so this is, this is one of the, you know, one of the areas where maybe I'm, I'm a little bit more relaxed on it is Kyrgyzstan has an incredible um, culture of hospitality. And so one of the things that we do allow, and this is, it's more like trail magic and tour divide. So this really is serendipitous. If you are invited in, by locals who have absolutely no idea what's going on with the race and it is completely random and they wave you over from their yurts and call for chai and say would you like to come and stay with us or eat with us or drink with us then that i say is okay but again yeah. you know this this goes back to integrity where you know there's absolutely no way that i will know if well it's unlikely that i would know if you knocked on that yurt and said oh can i get a drink or something and as, yeah. as some kind of an advantage um, I'm a bit safeguarded against on the other side is the fact that it will most likely not be an advantage in the race and you'll probably end up <laughs> spending several hours hanging out with the family and uh, <laughs> so it's probably not an advantage no. but you know in the context of Kyrgyzstan I felt that you know missing out on those opportunities for for that interaction with locals yeah. was one of the things where slightly relaxed the, the unsupported by packing uh, ethos. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm back. Well, that was a bit of a technical issue there, wasn't it? Apologies to the viewers. We were kind of wrapping it up anyway, so that was like inconvenient yeah. time. Just um, before the end. You, you, you answered that question about trail angels versus these other things really well. Uh, like, first time out, and I was going to give almost a identical kind of answer, was like, if in doubt, just don't do it. And, and that's kind of the rule. Like, when I said earlier on in the conversation, like, I just try and make my rides basically like un, 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 unimpeachable or unquestionable, whatever, just above the standards that no one can ever come back and say anything. It's like, just, just don't do it. And then you, and then you know, you've not done anything that could question your integrity. So taking that drink or whatever from a cachet is like, you know, if you're properly supplied, you shouldn't need it anyway, unless it's like one of the official supply points or something, but otherwise just don't do it. Easy. Yeah. Cause you'll regret it to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually don't really have anything else to say, but I thought that was a really, I thought that was a really good point that you made, and I, I thought it was just really important to like hammer that one home. Is like, just don't do it. I, you know, it's kind of, it's, 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 yeah. Yeah, if in doubt, don't do it. I think that's the sort of conclusion of, <laughs> of all of this. No, yeah, good. Okay, okay. I think this has been interesting. It, it would be good to do to do some more. And I, you said you were going to do some things with us, and I'm like, oh, maybe it'd be interesting to be. So talking about those, you know, I, I spent some time when I tried to put on my event, and much of the premises of that is trying to push things forward and, and, and set standards and things. So it'd be interesting to talk to you about, about that um, and, and serendipity and these other things that, that's kind of a, a, a gray area. I did my flow chart. Yeah. Have you seen my flow chart? I've seen your flow chart. Who was there? Someone telling me that, yeah, even, even with the flow chart, which is really good, that you, you still end up, you know, but yeah, it helps for sure. That's what the flow it, chart It does yeah. help. Mate, I, I just tried to help my newer people coming in going, tick, tick, tick can't do that oh i can do that you know uh, or, yeah. but if you start at the beginning going i'm just not gonna do it then whatever cool yeah great it's that's a good way to end, isn't it? The it's a good way to end. just don't do it <laughs> and right. if you need it if you really need it then you know that you shouldn't have taken that help and, and report yourself self-report yeah so that is one of the things i think is, is you know you're saying things that can be done as well is that you know, it does happen when people get assistance, but I think one of the, I actually respect those, the few riders that then, you know, disqualify themselves. They yeah. say, look, you know, I got into a tough situation and I think it's better to disqualify yourself than then to, you know, have that ride that, you know, you didn't do right. Yeah. Or, or scratch even. Yeah. Either way, you know, you can scratch, you can finish the ride, but you're out of the race. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I put a comment in, in, in for, for, for Lisbeth, the, the Girona, that's like, I'd rather that you break some of the rules in order to be able to finish your ride and, and just get it completed, but not be considered like for a time or anything like this than, than scratch. 
Yeah, so I mean, I had the same, you know, we have an uh, assisted finish category, you know, there's sort of an, you know, with an asterisk, and, you know, there's been a lot of talk about asterisks recently, but uh, an asterisk is not necessarily a bad thing, you know, it's just, no, it's, it's much better to finish the ride than to cheat to finish it in another category, you know? Or, or just to scratch, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, or yeah. to scratch and not, you know, not there, 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 is, there is There is no, nothing wrong with an asterisk, it's just like for a, a, a definition of standards, really. Exactly. Yeah, cool. All right, thank you for your time, Nelson. I really appreciate it. And uh, sorry to the, viewers nice for, the for the connection. Uh, I'm going to blame Kyrgyzstan. Hopefully it wasn't Spain. <laughs> <laughs> it been Spain. Yeah. We've got great excellent internet over here. Yeah. All right, I will, uh, I'll see you in a month in person, if, uh, if not we, if we don't speak before. I hope everything goes yeah. well for the preparations for the, for the event and there's no uh, revolutions in the meantime or anything like this. All massive avalanches. That one's passed. So Juku's slightly safer than it was before. So it's all good. Yeah, yeah I'll see, see you next. <laughs> sure. Thanks. See you. Bye.